What's up? This is Levi from Miss Maya, and you're watching Sonic Perspective. Hey, man. Thank you so much for taking the time to have a chat with me. It's been an interesting kind of logistical nightmare to get this sorted, but I'm, I'm really yes. glad we made it happen. Yes, it's my morning, your night. We made it. Yeah, it's almost my morning actually. It's like it's eleven fifty six here, so I'm 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 really I'm going strong. Ten a.m. here, or nine fifty six. Yeah, amazing. And so, but let's let's talk about the things that have kind of stopped us from. When, I mean, when were we supposed to do this interview? Like maybe a week ago. I can't something like that. Yeah, it was like but, a week. So did your did the bus break down? Yes, yeah, so, um, our AC units. So um, it's like summertime, obviously here and notorious for buses and we sort of forgot because we haven't toured in so long but right when it gets hot like generators and ac units start busting and breaking and right when we got to florida all like ac units started breaking and we're like waking up and sweat sleeping and it's just been like and it's funny because all my other friends that are in similar vehicles right when they hit texas all that like within this last week and everyone's just like like blowing up all over the place it's just the heat like these vehicles are awesome but we leave them on all day, we live in them, and like, if oh, wow. you're not hooked up to the venue, you're on a generator. So you're like, just running it 24-7, seven days a week in the desert, in this heat, and they're black. So like, oh, it's big man. black vehicles, so just explode. <laughs> yeah, yeah so that's just... It's that's funny, just... when you're sleeping in your bunk, you can touch the wall, and the wall is like hot. On the outside, but it's like cold. That sounds so nice right now. Like, as you can see, I'm, I'm wearing like two jackets and I'm, I'm not in a good way. I'm really suffering at the moment. Down in Tassie, it's getting very cold. Um, so Tasmania in, in Australia, it's getting very cold. So uh, I'm kind of jealous of your black bus in the heat right now. <laughs> but um, yeah. It, That's my shame. Like the, I got a nice little uh, film of sweat. On the, so. <laughs> hey, just, just rock it, dude. Just, just rock it. <laughs> Um, look, speaking of tour, how does it feel to, you know, to be on this, I mean, not just a tour after COVID, but just a massive tour of this, you know, of this proportion? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's been crazy. Like the first few days was super, super surreal because, um, and it still is like to this day, we're all talking to my wife was last night. It's, we're like 45 days into this tour, 40 days. And um, from being off tour for so long, not... I sort of like this, not disconnected, like naturally disconnected and forgot. And then like I'd be at the grocery store and they'd be like, Miss Master. And I'm like, no way. And I'm like, oh yeah, I'm in a band. What's up? And and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm in a band. And then like going to these shows, the first few days would like walk on stage and it's like nothing ever changed. And the crowd was awesome. We're playing. And like I wouldn't talk in between the songs. My dancer sucked. I'm like, uh, it was just sensory overload. And now, <laughs> like I said, it still hasn't sort of faded away. And we're like 40 days into this and I'm still like, this is crazy that we get to do this. Like, wow. cause we've done this since we were like 16 and it's like, it's been awesome. And obviously, like you said, this tour, touring in general is awesome, but this tour specifically with all that it means, it's like a dream come true. I think like, I don't even think it's processed cause I'm just processing that there's loud sounds and lights every night still. <laughs> and then I'm like, it's, it's crazy. But um, yeah, we're so fortunate. I've, I've never felt so thankful than I do now. I think, I think everyone in music does just because it's been taken away and now it's back. And yeah. We're, just, we're very lucky that we get to do this every day. It's crazy. And the shows are I mean, insane. <laughs> like, I'm just like, what is happening? Yeah. I mean, there's been sold out shows. And I mean, from the footage that I've seen, it's just, it's just chaos in the best possible way. And I'm, I'm like, you know, I, I'm in the metal core groups and Facebook and all that kind of stuff. And I'm constantly seeing comments of like, Miss May I made the crowd destroy themselves the most. Um, like yes. all this kind of stuff, like, you know, oh, they were the best. And this, I'm not this in those, so I appreciate that. No, that's all good. I just do a bit of, you know, what's the word? Uh, a bit of lurking, you know? And um, yeah, yeah a, a lot of people were just like, yeah, they they killed it. They took, you know, they took the thunder from all that remains. It's like, oh God. <laughs> but uh, I mean, it's it sounds like an amazing lineup. You've got Varials, you've got Tala, um, a personal favorite of mine. And then of course you guys, and then all the remains. It's, it's, it's really cool because they're all different time time periods of metalcore in a way um and that's that's kind of like a really cool thing to display physically but with of course you know we're talking about being back into live settings and stuff what were you and the band doing during lockdown to kind of i guess satiate that music um that music need well we were 
so when the pandemic hit, we were at the end of an album cycle. So we were already like sort of riding and like slowing down a little bit to get ready for another album. So sort of worked out great it extended that. That's why our album cycle ended up being five years and not just the time of the pandemic, two years. It was like we were already on the end and we we're ending the longest album cycle of our careers. So like we always did 18 wow. months and that was 24 months. So like, oh, we'll do 24 months, change it up. And then the world stopped. We're like, okay, it's 48 months now or whatever, whatever it is. And the album's not even going to be out for a while. So like, um, <clears throat> but we were already writing. But then again, the pandemic was so long. Yeah. Halfway through the pandemic, we even went back to the studio. We spent so much time and the album was done. We still had a year to sit around. So it's like, <laughs> oh my God. Uh, but so it's just, there's a lot of creative layers that we've added to it. I think that's, that's help. Oh, sorry. No, that's not what the, but like we, we got to add a lot to music because um, we got so much time to focus on it. So that's, that's been really nice to like, just not be like pressed for shows or press or anything because everything was TBD. It was just like work on it as much as you want. And like when the world opens up, we'll be ready. And I think it's really cool because I think it really shows, especially with like our, I, I even think with Unconquered, like just that video and the song and everything. Because we went back to the studio at Twilight. We did reverse so hard. And, uh, the reaction was miles what we thought. We're like, oh, they think this is cool. I'm like, they should see what we did for this whole album. I'm like, this is crazy. So I'm really excited for when you hear the rest of the album because we just, we get to have time because we've always not been rushed, but I feel like every album when we leave the studio, we leave yes. because of the schedule. Like we're never not recording the last second. We're like, it's like the very last second of studio time and you're like, maybe we can make this a little better. <sighs> you're like, okay, we're leaving. Bye. And then like, this time we had all the time we're like i think it's done i think this is the album and we just got to sit on it so wow that's yeah so that must yeah. be a pretty different experience coming out of that being like you know because i think was it leonardo da vinci said work uh, arts never completed it's abandoned or something like that but maybe this might be the closest that you felt to it's being the closest completed. it's definitely still not completed because we're still like oh, <laughs> It's cool. That's it's cool. that's amazing. And so for this single, you and I'm guessing the album as well. You went to um, Will Putney. Yeah. At um, I forgot his. Oh, Graphic Nature Audio, of course. So what led you to? I guess what what motivated you rather to go with him for this album? Um. So he was like, we worked with him. Well, we never worked with him before, but we like he was in the same studio. We were doing um. At heart, in 2012, he was working downstairs at the machine shop at that time. Yes, okay. um, working on the machine, and um, we got to meet him there. And we actually he helped us write a couple songs, um, uh, "Ballad of a Broken Man," and we had a few other riffs. Like he had some riffs that he helped us like co-write, um, and we like just headed off. And that was 10 years ago, and we haven't really worked with each other since then. Um, and he did in that time. He did like. For an autopsy, they are all this huge, crazy shit. Um, and we were obviously watching, we're like, this is really cool. And this album, we wanted, like, we just wanted to be a metal band. Like, this is our first album where we're really not trying to, like, um, do anything experimental or trying to, like, break the mold or be game changers. We're just like, let's be the best that we can possibly be. So, with that, we, um, yeah, we wanted to go with someone like Will. And like someone who's like a metal um, uh, pioneer, and it, it was really cool because he he is metal to the core. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like to his true. heart, he is a metal guy. And I'm like, okay, like this is what we need. And he'll t- he 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 shot a straight. Like I just did a post last week about the lyrics of Unconquered, and um, yeah, I, I just did that post, and it was really cool because lyrical, like he's really big on lyrics, and which we've never worked with a producer like that. And um, he just really like made me think of everything different. It was nice because we were up there for a month just writing. So I got to work on vocals for this event. So, and so to let you know too, just to rewind. So we did work with Will, but he just did vocals on this album. Nick Samson did instruments. Like he did our last album. Yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. That clarifies a lot. That's um, that's that's an important piece of information. But that's yeah. that's really cool that you kind of went to him specifically for that, even though he's incredibly capable. And you know, you look at Knocked Loose's latest um, EP, or even like anything from Counterparts. Or I mean, we honestly you could go on for hours. Like the stuff he's done recently, that's like of epic proportions. But that's that's oh, really yeah. cool. What? Why is Unconquered the track that 
the, the sorry let me let me rephrase why is unconquered the track that you decided would be the one that you would release like the first track from miss may i in five years to release why was it unconquered um i think we wanted so there's like a lot of empowering songs in the album and there's it's like a well-rounded album of like black metal influence swedish metal influence like wow it's all over the board and then then there's like the metal core and just normal like radio metal like it's all our influences combined but with unconquered we're like it's really not only is like a good sum summary like instrumental instrumentally for the album but like lyrically it made the most sense to release first because it's also like the summary of the album since the album is like it's really just about a lot of it's not about the struggles and everything we like um everyone's went through the through with the pandemic but there's obviously a lot of that weight on there and um, obviously we're all out on the other end of it and unconquered sort of about that just being on the other end of um just shit and going through stuff whatever everyone's going through and um we were just like what better way to release our first song to be like hey we all made it out on the other end of everything we're back so like that's what it's about awesome and i'm guessing that in the live settings or in the in the shows that you've been doing in the past what 40 how many days have been 46 days now 500 days i feel like <laughs> no, it's been like four years it's been forever man it's all the longest tour we've ever done wow and i'm guessing that they're just yelling like all the fans are yelling it back at you already i'm, I'm guessing it's crazy dude it's that that breakdown cool. i look forward to it right now like when i wake up i look forward <laughs> to playing it every night because it is insane it's just like the best version of like another day at the office but yeah like the absolute best yeah. version what and it's what's back been... to back with hey mister on the set so i'm like let's go oh man. damn oh damn that's solid that's really cool what's been what's your favorite track to perform live especially on this tour well forever not forever but since it really came out it's really been like obviously hey mister is a, just a, a blast because it's like a crowd favorite and the, the sing-along so loud. Yeah. um shadows inside it's been it's really fun um yeah, until until Unconquered, I would say it went from like Hey Mister. It, it, it goes in different periods. Like yeah, it was Hey, sure. Mi- it was hey Mister for a very, very long time. Well, before that, it was Rolling with Chaos and Hey Mister and then Shadows Inside, which I know I'm, I'm obviously naming singles, but like we don't pick singles based off the song. Basically, we get to pick them. So like sure. the vocals on, on Shadows are very complicated and I like that. Um, and then... Yeah. Unconquered sort of the same thing just on steroids. Unconquered is like shadows inside on steroids. So it's like very fun yeah. to play. And then that breakdown. Yes. Let's go. Yes. <laughs> it sounds like it's been received pretty well just from the videos that I've seen. And as I said, like the comments and all that kind of stuff, people are just obsessed with it, man. So that's, yeah. I mean, if any, if that's anything to go by, I'm, I'm guessing that people are just going to be all over this album when, you know, when it comes out, they're just going to be uh, <laughs> beside themselves. Um, the artwork, everything is so sick. I'm so sick. Oh man, I, I can imagine, especially since you've been sitting on it for so long. It must, it must just feel like a massive weight off the shoulders when, when the time comes. Hey, I'm burnt out on the album because I've heard it so many times. I'm like, I've been listening to this thing for years. Like, you guys need to <laughs> listen to this because I'm over it. Please hear the album. Please, yeah, just like take it away from me. It's like that bowl of chips that you're constantly going back to. It's like, please, just, just have it for yourself now. But yeah. um, your your voice though, I mean, yeah, I've seen the footage live. It's it's so powerful and it's so consistent, you know. And through the career of the band, that's just something that's kind of been a mainstay. And that's oh, like, you. Uh, no, <laughs> thank you. I guess. I mean, a lot of a lot of vocalists, they whether they change their vocal style, maybe because they couldn't do what they used to be able to do, or they just change for the sake of changing. I mean, your your vocal style is so consistent, and it's almost. Well, it is. It's it's iconic. Like people hear you and they're like, I, I know exactly who that is. So the question I have for you is how much how much care and dedication have you put into your voice to get it to that level? And then how much care and dedication have you put it like put into keeping your voice at that level over the over the life of the band? It's definitely been more and more like the longer our band has been like active and the more serious we get. Cause when we first started, we were from playing like high school weekend shows to our first tour was like 40 days or something with like, I don't think there's really any days off. And I remember three days into that, I blew my voice out and I was like, what is happening? And impending, impending doom took us out on that tour. And the singer was like, you don't warm up. And I was like, warm ups for singers. Like, I don't sing. He's like, no, you don't warm up. Like, and then, so that was like, oh, okay, warm ups. And that was in 2009. So I'm like, okay, I should warm up. So I started warming up. And, and you just learn things. Like I learned that like, oh, spicy 
foods or like beans or like some acidic foods any time of the day for her. And then I learned from like Matt Heaphy, like, oh, he doesn't eat four hours before he plays because digestive stuff. And I was like, oh, that's a, that's a great idea. So I started implementing that. And then I implemented like water intake. And even on this tour, I've added to the arsenal. I've like started using a nebulizer on this tour because I'm just like, oh, oh yeah. it helps with like, with mountain altitude. So that was like, that's been a thing like the last decade, but I'm like, oh, just drink more water. And they're like, my local coach is like, you can drink more water or drink the same amount of your nebulizer when you're in the mountains. And I'm like, ah. So I like, you just get this like Swiss army knife of like trying to prepare for every, yeah. it, the, obviously vocals are, everyone wants to be in a studio environment and like, and that's like obviously fun and having yeah. your tea and being in air conditioning. Like that's nice, but like, on towards the elements so you just have to like be prepared to be like okay this venue you can smoke inside so the whole front row is gonna have cigarettes tonight like how are we oh, gonna do this yeah like, <laughs> yeah <laughs> so you just have to figure it out yeah wow but um i appreciate that yeah it's and just warm-ups and i don't know become more passionate and i think comfort like a lot of it's comfort and confidence like a lot of weird stuff you want to try or you can sell you hear in your head you have to like I don't have the confidence to really shoot for it because it's not going to sound great the first time. But you're like, no, I, I hear this thing. Like, I want to try this. And if like, and we've even had that through albums. Like, there's some albums I'm like, that was cool, but like, I wish I knew what I knew now. I could do it better. So like, yeah. you just try and experiment and just push the limit. Like, I was. This album was actually crazy. I I, I talked about it a little bit, but this album we went wild on vocals. Like, really, not experimental, but like just super like black metal and like inflate like really like like uh, um really like at the gate like just at the gates and finds like really weird vocals but that's like what stuff i love and we like push the limit and then we sent it in and that was the first time like our whole team was like ah, this might be a little too much progression you guys might want to dial it back a little bit so we actually went back oh, and we did the vocals because i think we were off for so long that i was like Oh, I'm coming in guns blazing. <laughs> yeah, and it was it was too much guns blazing, so we dialed. I back. love it. Wow. And so, but how do you know that point where it's like, is this is this too is this strain too far from the Miss May I that like we know and love as well? Like, what, what, how do you kind of recognize that point and kind of dial back from it? It's our team. If it was up to us, you guys would be like, who is this band right now? Playing? It's our team being like, guys. Because I you know what it is. It's our whole, we're all like friends. We're like I honestly feel like we're like angsty sixteen year old high schoolers still. Because we like That's amazing. Our dr- our adrenaline and excitement is just like <laughs> we're like oh let's do this. We're like we'll do this. Like and, and unless we have a team to be like focus. Like I, like we're doing okay. something. Do this. Like okay okay. But like and like they give us some instruments and like give us a good like day or two. Like. <laughs> so they kind of keep you a little bit grounded they they kind of bring you back to yeah. earth a bit. okay oh um, we need well you can tell like through our career yeah the managers that didn't let us be grounded was like oh we did work tour with like uh 18 guitar cabs on stage oh we did like we did all this and i'm like oh yeah maybe someone should have probably stopped us on some of that it's like just yeah. put, put it down it's okay just relax. Oh, wait, wow. wait. Okay. Well, it's it sounds like you got a team that's that's doing you you know a lot of good stuff and taking care of you the way that they should. Yeah, yeah. It's they're great. It's awesome. It's um, yeah. I couldn't be happier. Awesome, man. Um, speaking of vocals, one last question: Who is a vocalist right now that you're kind of jealous of in the metal world? One that you kind of listen to uh, and go, oh, I wish I could do that. Um. And I feel like such a dick. I should know his name. <laughs> I haven't met him. Though. I haven't met his, him, so I don't. Who's I don't the band? Black, but I know his name. The singer of Lorna Short. Oh, Will. That's okay, Will Ramos. Yeah. Will. Yeah. Um, I just think that's crazy. And like watching his live vocals, I'm just like, this guy. This is cool. And I actually talked to some. And Pending Doom was out a couple of days ago, and that's when it. I was. 13, 14, like, and they took us on a first tour. They're like our dads, they're like our tour dads. Like, we didn't know what like loading, we didn't know what like loading was or any of this stuff. And so okay, like, yeah. the lingo, yeah. Yeah, we didn't know anything. They like taught us everything. Um, so they were out and we were, him and I were talking, uh, Brooke, the singer and I were talking about uh, Will. 
And we were just like, that kid is insane. But then we're like, it's so cool because like, that really shows dedication because like, he lives and breathes vocals, whether he's in Lorna Shore or not. Like yeah. whether he's in Lorna Shore or just Will, he would still be doing the same exact thing, just obsessed with vocals. And I love that. Like yeah. he on his own, like in that you, you can tell. And like him and I were just like, it's such a cool story of, um, of dedication. Like if you're dedicated and you work hard at it, like listen to this freaking guy. Like it's crazy. And, and he can, he can walk the walk too. Like the fact that he can do it live so similar to the recording is, is impressive. It's really impressive. Yeah. I think yeah, he's I making think. his own sounds. That's like, yeah, like I said, that's all, that's like, that takes a lot of confidence to be like, I hear this. So I'm going to try it guys. That's no one's done this sound and you do it. And then you're like, I hope people like it because yeah. it's a flip of a coin. Like a lot of stuff backfires. Like, you know what I mean? Like you've seen those albums, like, in fact, it could be like, what are you doing? But he's awesome. Hundred awesome. He's changing the game. Is, you might have had the Nebulizer idea well before he started talking about it, but did you potentially get the Nebulizer um, inspiration I didn't know he him? talked about it. Yeah, so he yeah he was on his Instagram. He talks about it all the time because he, he he loves it. He's like this is the best thing for recovery and keeping the throat you know all um not not dense but uh, you know I guess moist and and protected and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, I was just like oh well maybe maybe they're kind of connected. Maybe you know you got you either got it from him or he got it from you or something like that. But uh, yeah, just a, a funny coincidence. That's um. It's a cool. Yeah. yeah, my vocal coach sent it to me. It's oh, like, that's sick. Dude, it is any vocalist out there listening? It is. We, I can't believe I didn't have a long time ago. <laughs> it sounds like There's a so game many changer. Good, dude, it is. It just like, it hydrates you in places that water can't get to. And it's like, yep. oh, it's amazing. That's, is, is it kind of like, you know, when you have a shower and you like don't turn on the, any of the fans on, it's just like a full steam room and then you're just breathing in the mist like that? That's what you would think. No, because we have a, we've had a steam room for years. So we've had one of those for years and it does okay. <laughs> That's like, cool. This, this, this was, um, there's no heat. It's actually it's pressure through a mesh, so it pushes it through a mesh, and it makes wow. it makes even it makes smaller like ten times smaller molecules than steam. So steam is like a lot bigger than what a nebulizer does. But since okay. it's smaller, it goes all the way, it drops all the way to the bottom of your lungs. Ooh, it can go I further like into your lungs, and then you don't do water like we do. We do saline. We do like medicine and ice. Oh yeah, okay. So it's almost like a bit of a disinfectant as well, or some kind of inflammatory style liquid that goes down and just chills you out a bit. Yep, and we do that once or twice a day before every show now. It's like a routine. That's sick. We we call ourselves Neb Heads. Neb Heads. We're, like, we're Neb Heads. Yeah. <laughs> I like that a lot. It's like the Neb Club. Like, that's that's freaking cool. Well, there you go. Yeah, that's that's awesome, man. Well, that yeah. Any vocalist out there listening, get a nebulizer. Take care of yourself. Love yourself. You know. Um, yeah. On on tour, what do you kind of do to wind down you know during uh when, when you're on the bus traveling or even just at night after you after you have a gig and you, and you come back and stuff what what do you kind of have as like an on-the-road hobby i suppose is maybe the term um in the mornings i i like i run i run every single day so like right when i get to the venue before i eat or like drink a coffee or anything i like i wake up when i put my running shorts on like i just go outside and i do wow. i like i have the same same run every single day just do the same distance and i it's fun on tour because i get to explore so it's yeah. like a meditation i get to like just explore and i get to like accumulate to wherever we're at whether it's winter or summer or like i ran into the snow on this tour i ran into the rain like you just can accumulate to like the altitude and everything and, and and then yeah i don't know that's like that's my favorite one of my favorite parts of days because it's just like my me time for like 30 minutes of just like i'm gonna go do this in silence and come back and like feel good um, that's that's and cool. I, thank you, thank you. And obviously, it helps. Like, it's, yeah. it's a cherry on top because <laughs> vocals it helps a lot. Um, but like uh, the other thing is, I don't know if we have a wind down thing. We don't really wind down. I always we tell all our friends and family that too when they come out. We're like, once it starts, like we're gonna be on an adrenaline high until we pass out. <laughs> like, like once the show starts to the end of the yeah. night, it is just one wild ride. Like first oh note my God, man. to like go into the pillow you're like oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay wow and, and do you think do you think running also kind of gives you like a chance to i, I feel like because some bands when they're on tour they don't get that chance to actually experience the place that they're seeing right they don't get to 
um, whether it's just running around the streets or something like that, even if it's like a small yeah. few blocks, it, does that kind of give you the chance to, to check the place out and kind of get a bit more of a snapshot of what that place looks like? Oh my God. Yeah. Ten, tenfold, especially us touring so long. Like we played venues. I've played 20, 30 times over the course of a decade. And I'm like, guys, there's a river three blocks over. Do you know that? Oh my God, it's raining on the river. And like, we've been here this whole time. I didn't know there was water right here. It's beautiful. <laughs> and, um, cause you don't ever leave the venue. So, and, this is the first time I've consecutively always, like, I haven't missed a day. I'm like, today will be 268, 269 day. I haven't missed a day of running. Um, and I, I've ran on spurts on tour before, and it was so cool. So I'm really happy now that I'm, like, really consistent to do more tours and, like, not miss any days, no matter what. So, because I, wow. I did this, like, through Europe once, because I was training for, like, a marathon. I did, like, and we had an Australian European tour. So I did it in Australia, which was really pretty. I got to do, like, every morning I got to do really long Australia runs, and it was, like, Wow. Gorgeous. Going through the woods and just seeing nature. It was just awesome. That's cool. You just got to watch out for the snakes, of course. But then apart from that, you're pretty much sorted. Actually, we, we have a story. Um, Ryan was running with me at the time. He was into running. So we were like partners on that time. Because he was yeah. in, we were both training for marathon. And we were in, I don't know where we were in Australia. Maybe Adelaide. It was in the city. And like we, ran, we were in the hotel. We're like, oh, there's a nature park. We'll go to this nature and run through there. <laughs> or go through this park. We're running through and we were like at a standoff with this like, I don't know what kind of, it's like a stork or like this, it was like as big as us. No, no, I probably, it's probably like three and a half, it was, it was huge, but the mouth and everything, and he just put his wings up and he blocked the whole tray on path. It was just like looking at us and we're like, what do we do? And he was just like, he was like <laughs> freaking alpha mailing us on this thing. He's like, you're not passing. We had to like, we're no like, okay, way. this is his pass. And we like went around this huge bird and he was just like, like what? stopping us from going past him. Was it Dude, like a huge. pelican or something? Explain. Yeah, I was like, yeah, I guess it would be. I was going to say pelican, but I didn't know because it was, I feel like it was bigger. It was, it was huge. Like, some some pelicans. Was like, was like, oh, dude. Some pelicans, when you see them from afar, you're like, oh, that's a big bird. But then they walk up to you. They're, like, you're in, they're, they're in your vicinity and you're like, that's, that's a, that's a big ass bird. Like, you got to get that thing away from me. My, my cousin works at a, um, at a wildlife sanctuary up in Queensland and she takes care of all these animals and stuff. So she's like, let me hold these like in, in insanely large eagles and all that kind of stuff. But she actually locked me in a cage with a pelican and the thing attacked me. Like it, it doesn't like peck. It kind of like opens its mouth. Like and <laughs> Just smash with the bill. No, it like yeah. it closes on your, on your arm and then pulls back. And it's got keratin line bills like on the side. So I was getting paper cuts all on my forearm. Oh. And I was like, I don't know what to do. So I was like standing there petrified. And then my cousin's like laughing her ass off. Like, this is the most wicked comedy I've ever seen in my life. But I kind of appreciate it. Sounds very painful. It yeah. sounds like Australia, really. Um, yeah. I know That's, you guys uh, are a whole nother breed. <laughs> we're we're just surviving down here. We're just constantly in fear for our lives, but you know we'll we'll get by. It'll be okay. I I love it. It's the it's so it's the coolest. All I'll, some of our best band friends are down there. So, who are we talking like Parkway Drive or are there some other? Yeah, yeah, and they're always dude. We've toured we've toured with them so many times, but we we've, we've toured with them so many times that I have been on tour with them except Winston, to where every single member has been injured from a badass injury. Like, so I've wow. been on tour when Jeff, Jeff was out. I've been on a tour when Peg was gone. I've been on tour when like every person has been gone. And they're like, <laughs> and, and they're like, oh yeah, he was surfing and like his ass muscle got ripped out and he had to like swim to the beach and crawl to his car. I'm like, who the fuck? I'm like, what are you, you guys are insane. It's <laughs> like, that's insane. And he's like, so he's playing this tour in a wheelchair. And I'm like, you guys are yeah. the best like, maniacs there that's um yeah that's a pretty fitting description of that band that's very true they're um they are a bunch of interesting people <laughs> to put it simply um well look and speaking of other bands who are you listening to at the moment you know who are you kind of checking out on the road um and i guess who's grabbed your attention recently oh man um like newer stuff, but yeah I, i'm i'm the worst because i never really listen to newer stuff i mean let me I, I'm t- I hear that a lot at the moment. It's kind of like, oh, I'm listening to stuff that I've listened to since I was like, you know, 16 or in my 20s or something I like that. Because sometimes, <laughs> okay, well, who are you blasting constantly when you're chilling out? Who's like you go to? Well, right now, um, I so this. I don't know if this is going to be a if the users will like this, but uh, I, I'm like, 
I love pop music and like R&B and stuff. I love the New Weekend album right now. I'm like obsessed with the New Weekend Don FM album. Yeah. I think it's very creative. It's very cool how they did it. It's like one. It's one radio station. The whole album front to back. It's a. It's a. They. They. The transition to melodies are actually played. It's incredible, dude. Oh, really? So if you listen to it from the beginning and back, when the songs change and the melodies change and the tuning, it's oh, you're listening to this channel, and it's an actual. It feels like a dude. It's it's so. That's what I'm saying. It's like so. Creative. Okay. The whole uh, album. For sure. Cool. I'm, I'm, I'm into that for sure. Is it kind of like a concept album in a way, but it just concept in the way of presentation more than theme potentially? Um, no, I think the theme, so a lot of this has been theme. I, see, I love him. I think he's a great artist. I know it's hard because I feel like when you say you love a top 40 artist, people think you're lame and I don't appreciate that they're artists still. <laughs> Who cares, man? Like I, I, everyone's like, oh, you only like metal. I'm like, nah, dude, I love the 1975 so much. And they're like, are you kidding me? It's like, nah. I'm not, I'm obsessed. Like, I don't give a shit. Yeah, they're great. <laughs> they, yeah. That's very good. But yeah, no, I can continue with the weekend. Tell me. Oh no, it's like, I, I think it's stuff like, uh, this concept is, is like um, more, a mortality concept, like accepting mortality and death. Like that's what the whole, um, in like a positive way. Of like, sure. Of like, everyone's going to die. Like, and like, it's cool. And like his album prior to this was like a very anti, no, two albums before this was like a very anti, uh, not anti, but like very industry, like LA's fake, entertainment's fake. And it's so cool to hear a top 40 artist just literally put the middle finger up to everybody. You're like, this is so sick. Like, That's true. You can say that, but they actually pay <laughs> your bills. You have, you actually do have mansions and sports cars. Like, don't say that. <laughs> That's really funny, isn't it? It's like, he's literally buying the hand that feeds him, but the hand's like, it doesn't matter. Just we'll keep feeding. It's okay. <laughs> People love it. People love it. Yeah. So, um, but like, uh, okay. So, so some music wise, um, I do love, um, I do. I do. I looked at it. I love Dying Wish lately. I really love oh, Dying cool. Wish. I think really they're sick. Cool. Obviously the new, the new North Lane is insane. Um, yeah. As expected. We're not expecting less. It's, it's actually exactly what I wanted to hear. So that's great. Um, it is. It's a then, top, it's a top album, isn't it? Yeah. It's like, it's, it's a that's what I'm album. saying. I, I love when bands just take what they're great at and just perfect it. They weren't trying to just be another band. They're like, we're Northlane. We're going to be really fucking good Northlane on this album. And you're like, yeah. yes, thank you. <laughs> um, and then I love that band, uh, Caskets, right now. I think they're a really cool, underrated, like, they really remind me of, they, in, in the best way, and I don't mean this as, like, an overlaying blanket, but, like, they remind me of, like, the best of the best kind of bands of that sound on Warp Tour, but like to the next level, like Caskets perfected. And I think and their inner vocalist, I think is so good. That's really cool. I've, I can't yeah. remember who they're on tour with at the moment. Um, there's, there's a really, oh, no, nah, it's it completely lost me at the moment, but yeah, I've heard that they're like either the opening band or their second after that or something like that. And people are saying that they're stealing the show. Um, so I'm, I'm really kind of seeing where, singer, man. Yeah. Yeah, because it's like, it's like, it's that Warped Tour vibe, but good, like, not that anyone, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's that, it's that era, it's this, it's those vocals, it's those high vocals that you're like, everyone loves, but then it never translates or never, like, comes full circle, but this yeah. guy, it's like a circus survive, like, he's just got it, you're like, oh my god, like, he wow. works, and then I watch a lot of videos, I'm like, no way he's gonna do it live, and I go and they're like, never mind, <laughs> he's perfect guy. That's cool. That's really cool. So dying wish and caskets. That's a, that's a pretty good couple of picks there. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, look back, back to you, man. Uh, a couple more questions, then I'll let you go. Is there anything that you can kind of hint towards the viewers about what the album can contain? Like what's something that you really want them to be excited about? Uh, well, I, I think there's a lot of nostalgia um, fa not purposely nostalgic factors. I think the nostalgic factors are, oh, our first albums before we like started taking this like as a career was just like us writing metal songs in a basement, and it sort of goes back to that vibe of like we're not experimenting. Like it's not trying to like let's get on the radio, let's get in the magazine, let's do that because we've had to do those things back in the past. And like everyone has to do this. I'm not saying we're not obviously the only band. You so you have to go down these paths that are a little different and they get you out of your shell and like it helps you grow. 
but like our first album is obviously we're just kids and this is like we love metal this is who we are and yeah. it sort of came all the way back around to that because we've done every lane it's like okay we went down every lane we've had a great time we have to do another album oh yeah we're metal band let's do metal again and we're just like and it's just it's sort of so when you listen to it it sort of feels nostalgic you're like you guys used to do that you're like yeah isn't that cool like we did it again like and like my higher screams like there's a lot of parts that are like yeah stuff i haven't done since the first album and it just sounded right on top of what let's do this again like or um it's not that like i said it's not a regression or anything it just it subconsciously just makes you remember like oh yeah like they used to like i forgot that they could they or they did do that stuff i don't know it's cool Wow. Okay. Well, that's, I think that's something that a lot of people will be excited about as well. I mean, you know, you, you've kind of, you've kept yourselves as a mainstay of metalcore through this entire time. And of course you've, you've done some pretty amazing things to these albums. And then to hear, I think people are going to hear that, you know, going back to your, almost your original stuff and you know, revisiting old, old mannerisms and old behaviors and old personalities via music. I think a lot of people are going to be super stoked about that. So, yeah, yeah. Man. and it feels so, it feels so, yeah, I'm telling you, it's never felt so right and like comfortable. So I'm really hoping that's like a good vibe because this tour has been crazy because of that vibe and I'm really hoping the rest of the album is because it just feels good. I'm excited. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm yeah, so am I. <laughs> well, look, yeah, I, I'm excited as well, man. I'm sure everyone else is, is already um, thank you so much for your time, man. I, I, again, I really appreciate it. It's, it's been super cool to learn more about all this. And, um, and of course, um, you, you guys are still on tour, you know, all that remains 15 year anniversary yeah. of the fall of ideals with, uh, with burials and Tala, um, where you're, you're in Florida right now, where are you heading next? Yeah. Um, after Florida, well, we're in Florida here. We're actually in Florida for like four more, four more days, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we start heading up to East coast. So we get like North Carolina and, Oh, uh, yeah. North Carolina's and Atlanta's or Georgia, Tennessee. So, yeah, we head back up, sort, sort of circle back home, play both of, or play um, all our men's hometown and then call it a day. There you go. So if you're, if you're in those necks of the woods, do not miss it. It's, uh, yeah. yeah, from, from everyone saying it's, it's a place to be. So do not miss out. Go ahead. Look, thank you. Thank you very much for your time. And uh, yeah, and enjoy the rest of it. Appreciate it, man.